Welcome to the family. I'm Pastor Jason, and I'm so glad that you were here. I so love worshiping God, but especially corporately, especially in this day and time. We need each other. I want to invite you all, for those connecting with us, post in the comment section. Let us know that you're battle ready. Let us know if we can pray for you. We want to connect with you. Hit subscribe, like, share, help get the word out. We are here because we need each other. And if you haven't had the chance to text the word hello, 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 go ahead and do so right now. Text hello to 833-750-1352. Fill out a connection card. Let us know how we can pray for you, how we can connect with you. We want to do life with you. Well, we are in a series called Battle Ready. I love this series, and I love the fact that even though we're in a cosmic battle that's been going on literally since the beginning of time, God didn't leave us alone, that he has given us the weapons of our warfare, which are powerful and mighty. He has given us his armor. And we started this series off talking about the fact that we're in a spiritual battle, that the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus and he's telling them, hey, listen, there is a battle going on and you are in the midst of it. But here's the deal. God didn't leave us alone in this battle, that he is providing his armor to us. You see, Paul is actually in prison when he's writing this letter and he tells the, the church in Ephesus, listen, your battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities. It against, it's against Satan and his, and his demons and, and these spirits that are in these places that try to come against us in our mind and our imagination and wreaks havoc. But he says, listen, we get the ability to fight and win. And when we win, we win freedom for ourselves and for our family and for the body of Christ. And as Paul is looking at that uniform of the Roman centurion soldiers, he gives us some clues on how we are to fight, that God gives him a, a powerful picture of by looking at the natural uniform of the Roman centurion soldiers and says, hey, here, here's how you can actually take the application of what I'm seeing and actually win this battle. And then the first uh, part of the uniform we looked at was the actual belt of truth uh, that that the belt of truth itself is actually Jesus, that he is the truth. And it is through him that we have freedom from sin and access uh, to God the Father. Such a powerful picture. And then the second thing we looked at was the breastplate of righteousness, that it is because of Jesus that we're not guilty, that even though we ourselves have sinned, Jesus has declared us not guilty because it's not the, the life that I live that's being judged now that I'm in Christ, but it's the life that Jesus himself lived. And so we are no longer guilty that we are made righteous through Christ Jesus. Well, we're continuing our discussion today and we're going to talk about standing in peace. In Ephesians 6, 15, uh, Paul tells them he's looking at the shoes and he says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What's interesting is that the Apostle Paul also says in this same chapter three times, Stand, stand. He says it first in 611, he says, put on the whole armor of God, put it all on, all of it, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He says in 613, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, there it is again, stand. And he says it again in 614, stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, right? Stand therefore, the third time. And so what Paul is telling us is, listen, shoes matter. The shoes you wear matter. I mean, talk to, to any lady. My wife tells me, listen, babe, that don't match. I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, those shoes, it throws off the whole outfit. And I'm like, oh, I just thought it was some kicks. She says, no, nah, no, nah, those shoes don't go with that shirt. And, and I, I just trust her, right? In this instance, Paul says, listen, trust me, the shoes you wear in battle matter. And I get this, right? You know, on active duty, they issued me shoes to wear with, that I would wear and when I wore my nice uniform, but I also had another pair of shoes that were battle dress uniform boots, combat boots, right? 
And so the question we have for us today is what kind of shoes did the Roman soldiers wear, right? Well, they wore a type of shoe that was called a calgi. And it was a thick soled hobnail sandal, ideal for military boots. Uh, here's a picture of it. Uh, this is a replica there. They don't have any recent pictures of shoes from that era, but, but this is a pretty good replica. And when you look at them, what you see is that these shoes were designed for war. They would not do well in the palace. You'd slide all over the place. But where were battles fought? Out in the open in fields. And this gave the Roman soldiers a significant advantage, advantage over their enemy. Number one, it was a shoe that had grip. Those hobnails allowed them to gain traction. And so if they were going uphill or downhill and they were fighting an enemy, the enemies would slip, especially if it was raining, they could go forward. They could keep marching. They could stand firm and they could hold their ground. So powerful. So Paul's looking at these shoes and he's telling us to do the same, that we are to stand firm and hold their ground. Taking a closer look at them, those actual nails, uh, they're, they're, inside of a very thick shoe. But the other part of the shoe is the fact that it was open, it was airy, and it allowed them to be able to walk through trenches and all sorts of things. And if their shoes got wet, their feet would dry quickly, which was another advantage over their enemy. Very powerful. And so now we get a picture of these shoes that they would carry. They were lightweight and they were efficient and they were able to withstand the enemy. Uh, but, but what does that have to do with the, the gospel of peace, right? What does it have to do with the other part that that helped me understand how the shoes that the Roman centurion soldiers wore and the gospel of peace? How do they have to tie together? Well, let's answer the question. What is the gospel of peace? Well, the gospel of peace is is the good news, the good news. Well, what's the good news? Well, the good news for us is that we have salvation from sin and death that it has been made available to all people through Jesus. That is big news. You see, prior to this revelation, we were dead in our sin. There was no hope for us. So the good news for us is that we now have salvation available to us. It's not just for Jews, but it is for all people. And that then brings peace. We now have the ability to have peace, and that's a tranquil state of the soul, an assurance of salvation through Christ Jesus. We can be at peace with God because God made us right with him. So then the question is, why do we need gospel shoes of peace, right? Why do we need these shoes? Well, number one is so that we could become friends with God. You see, without the gospel, we are enemies of God. I remember that song. I am a friend of God. Right. That's a wonderful song. But but when you read it, you understand what Paul is saying here in first Coloss I mean, in Colossians 1 21 that and you we can put our names there. And Jason, who was once alienated an enemy in my mind by wicked works. Yet now Jesus, he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to pre present me holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. That is powerful. What that says is I was once his enemy. I mean, I don't know if you thought about the fact that if you are an enemy of God, you can't win that. There's no winning that. The Bible says that no scheme of man. No plan of man can prevail against God. And it makes sense. He is the creator and we are the created. There's nothing that we can come up with, right? We exist in time. He invented time, right? There's nothing we can do to come against him. And so it's a wonderful thing to actually be his friend. You know, I remember, um, you know, I was trying to, to get in to a particular establishment and I didn't know uh, the people there, but I was with the right guy. I was with the right guy. And, and even though my name wasn't on any list anywhere, I didn't know anybody in the establishment. I knew this guy that knew everybody. And because he knew everybody and had all the right connections, I was able to get in not based on my merit, not based on anything I did, but I was his friend. 
Well, it's the same way when we go to heaven, that when we become friends with God, we're not his enemy. So if we're not his enemy, we're his friend. And Jesus says it this way in John 15, 15, no longer do I call you servants. And some translations it would say slave, right? For a slave, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. This is so powerful. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. Is that not powerful? You see, just like I couldn't get into that establishment on my own merit, I can't get into heaven based on my own merit. The same is true for you. And I was more than comfortable and happy to get into this establishment with my friend because the dudes that were there at the door that were looking to see for those people that weren't supposed to be there, man, you, you were going to be in some pretty serious hurt, right? And so I was excited to be able to walk past those guys with no issues. They greeted me as if I belonged there because I did, because I came with the right friend. And that is true for us as well. But the second reason is so that we can live in peace with God, because without the gospel, peace with God is impossible. We would still be enemies with God. And if you're an enemy of God, there is no peace. Your life is a living mess. Right. Because not only are you an adversary with of Satan, but you've got God over here trying to get you. See, God wants you. He's not trying to hurt you. God, his whole desire is to be your friend. That's why he came. Right. And we see this in Colossians 1, It says in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. You see, God doesn't want to be our enemy. For God so loved the world, you know the passage that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, would not die, but would have everlasting life. You see, Jesus is saying right here, listen, you're my friend. You're my friend. And in John 14, 27, he says, and, and because you're my friend, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. This is so powerful here. And so let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What he's saying there is I'm not your enemy. And because I'm not your enemy, no one can be your enemy because he's God. If, if you're God's friend, then that means any enemy of yours becomes an enemy of God's and God is is perfect and all powerful and mighty. Not even death itself could hold Jesus down. He is a good friend, not just a good friend, he is a perfect friend to have. So then the question is, how do we wear them? How do we wear these shoes of peace, the gospel shoes of peace? Well, number one, bind them to your soul. And I know soul for a shoe is, is spelled differently, but here, Paul is inviting us to, to bind this to our soul. In Ephesians 6, 15, he says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now that word shod, that, that's not one that we use too often. I don't say to my son uh, or my, my sons or my, my daughters, uh, uh, sons, uh, go shod your shoes. I mean, it's not a word we use now. So, so let's take a look and see what that actually means. And that word shod is hoop ad ed o to bind under oneself, to bind on, to, to connect with, right? He is saying, listen, bind this truth, bind the gospel, bind the, the understanding and the peace of the gospel to your very soul. Let this become a part of you. You see, the shoes that the Roman centurion soldiers wore, they wore out. They would wear them. And after uh, about three to four months, they'd have to replace them again and again. Those, those nails would wear out. But God's saying to us through the Apostle Paul, these shoes that you're wearing, it's God's armor. It never wears out. It never gets old. It's literally something that we get the privilege and the opportunity to wear for all eternity. So bind, bind it, bind it to your soul. But the second thing is break them in before the day of battle, before, you know, I was thinking about 
you know, this idea of breaking it in in Ephesians 6, 15, it says, and having shod your feet and with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that word preparation is important because it's only used one time in the entire Bible. And it's here in Ephesians 6, 15. And that word preparation, it, it is het oi mas era. It means prepare before readiness. You know, I remember when I was training uh, young troops and and had a long school that that lasted several months. And and as I've said before, when I came on active duty, uh, we were in peacetime and then then war broke out. And as a result, we, we, we swelled pretty large as an armed forces to be able to, to fight the war effort. And so we had all these young airmen that were coming and learning their craft and these troops. And, and they would get frustrated because they were ready to actually go to war. They're like, man, I signed up. I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to go now. But they would be months away from graduating, months away. And so I would have a conversation with them. I'd say, hey, come, come here, come here. So, so you, you think you're ready, that you are prepared, that your readiness is up to par. I said, now you have several more months to go until you graduate. So if I put you on a plane right now and I send you to go and help fight, what's going to happen when you arrive? How useful are you going to be in actually fighting this war? And in addition to fighting the enemy, th their job was also to help make sure that the right supplies made it to people and villagers and people that were counting on this food. How useful are you going to be in helping to ensure that we can deliver the supplies and the things we need to to the people that are counting on it? When you haven't finished your school, when you are not prepared and not ready, they kind of put their head down. I said, so what's going to happen if you show up? They're going to have to stop actually the war effort and they're going to actually have to do what? Train me. Exactly. They're going to have to train you on how to do your job in the midst of war. How foolish is that? Don't wait till the day of battle to actually learn if this works. Get it ready beforehand. Prepare now. Read your Bible now. Be assured of your faith now. I told the young airmen, learn this now, learn your skill now, learn your craft now so that when you arrive, there might be a little bit of on the job training when you get there, but all the basics of what you need to know and the principles and the foundation of your learning will already be there. And when you arrive, you'll be a welcomed addition as opposed to so many when you arrive, you're not trained, you don't have the right equipment, you don't know if it works, right? Don't, don't figure that out when you get there. Break it in before the day of battle. And number three is believe in them. Believe in them. This is the value of breaking it in. You begin to trust in it and rely in it and understand that this works. I can use this, right? Ephesians 6 15, it says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That word gospel again is the good news, the salvation from sin and death through Jesus, right? Believe that. And, and, and the true peace, which is the assurance of salvation through, through Christ. He's saying, listen, understand that because of what Jesus has done, because of what Jesus has done, because of what he has done, we get to be friends with God and we get to live in peace with God. And so my question for us today, my question for you today is what kind of shoes are you wearing, right? What kind of shoes are you wearing? As Paul talked about before, what kind of shoes you wear matter? It can literally mean in the heat of battle, the difference between victory and failure, the difference between life and death. And so my question for you today is, are you wearing the shoes of the gospel of peace? And if you're not, what are you waiting for? Today is the perfect day to put them on. And if you have them in your possession, don't just let them sit in a corner. Don't just put it on a shelf. Don't just have it sitting in a mobility bag, but put them on. Today is the day. And so pray with me.
If you've not yet put those shoes on, pray with me. And if you have them on, pray with me so that we can go another level and be ready to fight and stand firm and win victory for ourselves, for our family, for our friends, ultimately for the body of Christ. Let's pray. Well, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that that you have not left us here without weapons, without armor. That, Father, we've already talked this through, that, that you have given us the belt of truth. Lord, you have given us the breastplate of righteousness. And Lord, you have given us shoes of the gospel of peace and that we can stand firm and ready so that when the day of evil comes, we can rest assured and, and stay in peace because of you. So, Father, for those that are listening now and they have yet to put on this armor, I pray that they would join me now. Join now if you're ready to, to, to be battle ready and to put on this beautiful armor, God's armor. Say, dear Lord Jesus, today I give you my past, my present, and my future. Today I choose to serve you, to follow you, to trust you, to put my faith in you. I choose to wear the shoes of peace. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, let us know. Text the word hello to 833-750-1352. Fill out a connection card or post in the comments and say, today I have prayed that prayer and I am ready to wear my shoes of peace. I have them on and I am ready to tell the world. Well, we got one last worship song that we're going to go into. I want to invite y'all to join us again next week as we go into Battle Ready Part 5 and we talk about faith that protects. God bless. Can't wait to see y'all next week.